scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. I assure you that God will surpass your expectations tonight in the name of Jesus. So as we submit ourselves to a few minutes of prayer, please don't be distracted. It is part of the service. Pray from the depth of your heart. Any distraction must be seen as an evil spirit trying to rob you of your portion tonight. Hallelujah. So you pray with fervency. You pray with all your heart. Lift your voice and say, Father. Shout it again. Say, Father. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare that everything you have for me, I receive tonight. Go ahead and begin to pray. Pray in the spirit. Pray with understanding, pray with power, fire, passion. Shake barasco prande ge balaka to se fresia. Shada bega de balaka prakata paranda kasa prende ge de belegeta. Everything you have, the healing. Everything you have, the impartation, the open doors, direction, illumination. I receive tonight by your spirit. Someone pray. Seka parakatos kale brenda ke bereketos. Sati bakata parakos shabrenda ke belekest. Sky Zabazasi Kaparanda Shavra Sebelekatas Emprata Kaparaka Tafraska Dabalaka Tafrenda Gebelekes Kaprete Gebelekatos Those following from across the globe pray in the spirit that which God has in store for you receive by faith the Bible says now there remaineth a rest for the people of God there remaineth a rest for the people of God there remaineth a rest for the people of God. It says, let us labor to enter that rest. Labor to enter that rest. Labor to enter that rest. Shataka parakas kabata katabaleka tofras kabaranda kap. Shalige berekete parandas kaprake velashiasa. Prakata paranda kaprake tebeleke tos. We labor in the spirit tonight to enter that rest in the name of Jesus Christ that played in the spirit a portion for me a portion for my destiny a portion for my family I step into it by faith someone is praying seriously someone is praying without distraction hallelujah Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says the word of God is quick and powerful. It's only his process and his dealings that is slow. His word is quick and powerful. That is our next prayer point. You're going to cry, Lord, do a quick walk. It didn't take you so long to create the heavens and the earth. Recreate my life tonight. Do a quick walk. Lift your voice and begin to cry. A quick walk. A quick walk. A quick walk. Shake up a rakatoska brandeke berekatosia. 
do a quick walk someone pray do a quick walk in my ministry a quick walk in my life a quick walk in my destiny when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion we were like them that dream do a quick walk in the name of Jesus do a quick walk a quick walk in my body a quick walk in my finances a quick walk over my job over my family over my marriage over my children over my health go ahead and pray do a quick walk by the spirit of the living God Someone is praying. Sabrakatabeleka to praska balakusiata. Alleluia. 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 We are still praying. Genesis 21 verse 6 this will be someone's testimony tonight and Sarah said God had made me to laugh so that all that here will laugh with me I'd like you to open your mouth and pray Lord I step into a season of laughter in the name of Jesus laughter means the war has come to an end laughter means the struggle has come to an end laughter means victory is established you do not laugh during the time of war. You do not laugh during the time of travail. No woman laughs while giving birth. It is after the child comes that laughter follows. Someone pray. Oh God, make me to laugh. Release my laughter in this season. Laughter meaning rest. Laughter meaning victory established. Laughter meaning testimonies made manifest. Is someone praying? All that hear will laugh with me. All that see tonight will rejoice with me. All that see my healing. All that see my prophetic word. All that see God locate me will laugh with me. Go ahead and pray. Shake a paracatuski at about. Sabranda Gaberecos, Salagros Gaberecos. All that here will laugh with me. All that here will rejoice with me. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Next prayer point. You have turned my mourning into dancing and my sorrow to joy. Watch this. If water can be turned to wine, it means pain can be turned to joy. If water can be turned to wine, it means unemployment can be turned to victory, even in terms of employment. The, 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 listen, the idea there is not just water turning to wine. The idea is the power that can make anything become what God says. Anything anything water turning to wine is only a sample it is to show you that nothing in itself must remain permanent it says why we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen for the things that are seen visible now current are temporal that under a certain conditions the things that are seen can switch and be made manifest to something else say father one more time say father everything in my life that is not your will let it change tonight open your mouth and pray everything in my life everything in my life that does not look like you 
everything in my life that is inconsistent with your will for me everything in my life that is inconsistent with your blueprint someone pray let it change everything that is not you pray in your life your marriage your ministry the life of your children your career it must change tonight if water turned to wine pain can be turned to joy if water turned to wine defeat can be turned to victory hallelujah hallelujah look up please in the court of law when a verdict is given and it is against you and you feel that justice was not meted out there is a dimension of the judiciary called the appeal court when you go to the appeal court you go with greater evidences and say in as much as it was a judge that made that declaration you still feel within your spirit that justice was not meted out are we together now even when god the judge sent a prophet to a man called hezekiah he said pack up your load he said, god almighty sent a genuine prophet to go and tell a man put your house together you will not recover hezekiah said i respect you prophet you leave he turned his face knowing that the lord is gracious and compassionate slow to anger and rich in love that in the character of god mercy triumphs over judgment are we together say father every judgment against my life against my family manifesting as a cause manifesting as negative patterns let the mercy of god overrun and overturn open your mouth and pray let mercy we appeal by the mercy of god that the ill speakings of darkness we appeal by the mercy of god that the ordinances of judgment be changed let it be overrun let it be overturned koinonia pray mercy triumphs over judgment mercy that speaks death mercy that speaks defeat mercy over curses mercy over ill speakings that even the lawful captives by the mercy of god will be set free tonight In the name of Jesus hallelujah we are still praying once upon a time the Bible tells us that because the wickedness of men had reached the heavens that God was going to met out judgment upon the earth and there was such chaos and catastrophe the Bible says the heavens gave up their waters the earth gave up their waters every one of the then inhabitants died they perished in that flood except noah his wife the three sons and their wives but then the bible says the rain continued 
the flood continued but something happened when God was about to bring it to a stop I hope you know that it did not just stop because God wanted it to stop let me show you Genesis 8 verse 1 and God remembered Noah this is why the rain stopped and God remembered Noah and every living thing watch this and the cattle that was with him in the ark and God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters assuaged verse 2 it says and the fountains of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped and the rain from heaven was restrained not because it was time God remembered that there was still a man. If this rain continues, even the man I'm trying to preserve, that evil will eventually destroy him. There is a limit to which the ark can receive and preserve. While it was rising, God remembered for the sake of Noah, I have to stop this flood now. You're going to pray. There are certain evils that have prevailed, but now that you have come, you are going to say, Lord, remember that I am your son. Remember that I am your daughter. The Bible says, which of you, whose son will ask him for bread and will give him a stone or will ask him for fish? and he will give him a serpent go ahead and pray lord remember not as though he has forgotten is a law in the spirit it brings him to consciousness of the fact that you need his mighty hand in your life go ahead and pray if you remember noah remember my family remember me go ahead and pray and the lord remembered noah and the lord remembered joshua selman and the Lord remembered Koinonia and the Lord remembered your business and the Lord remembered the sickness that is plaguing you hallelujah hallelujah when John the Apostle was recording the events that would follow the eschatological events that would follow he said that judgment will be meted out during the great tribulation and he said God himself had to put a restraint he says for the sake of the elect can I tell you no matter what kind of evil comes upon the earth there are men that move the heart of God and for their sake he will restrain it are we together now yeah. evil cannot continue unhindered when there are saints in light which of you whose child will ask him for bread and will give him a stone or will ask him for meat fish and will give him a serpent and God remembered Noah and God remembered Noah there are men who can forget and it is a terrible thing when people forget about you I have taught you here one man forgetting joseph added two years to his calamity hallelujah the king forgetting mordecai left him at the gate for only god knows how long but the bible says that night could not king ahazaroth sleep and he said bring me the chronicles we're still going to pray over this remembrance the memory of men can fail them but the spirit of god has an assignment to bring to remembrance that includes your destiny helper he can bring to remembrance that you said in january this young girl should have gotten a job and it is within your power what has stopped you from acting say father shout it say father in the name of jesus i decree and declare let the book of remembrance be open concerning me go ahead and pray you're not wasting your time you're programming realities in the spirit through prayer let the book of remembrance be open outside pray all the overflows pray connecting online pray hallelujah praise the name of the Lord amen there was a very interesting story in the Bible is a story of the fig tree the Bible says that it was not even yet time for figs 
and Jesus was hungry and he saw a fig tree green very inviting and he went there hoping to get figs and the Bible says not finding figs he cursed it and said no man eat of you again and by the next day when they came there the Bible says they saw that it had withered you're going to pray it is dangerous to not bear fruit John 15 and verse 8 herein is our father glorified when ye bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples John 15 16 you have not chosen me but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain fruit here talks of results it matters that you produce results can I tell you the world we live in will never place a demand upon your life until and unless you bear fruit you bear fruit in ministry, you bear fruit in business, you bear, there are many fruitless Christians. They are born again, they are saved, but there is nothing about their life that makes them the desire of nations. Don't expect people to come and rally around you. Don't expect people to be used by God to support what you stand for if you do not bear fruit. You are going to cry. The spirit that is responsible, listen, listen, listen. I've eaten a few fruits in my life and there are a few of them you can see the fruits looking wonderful especially fruits like garden egg and then you give it a bite only to find worms inside has that happened to you that you see a beauty it doesn't look bad doesn't look um, you know decayed looking very inviting and then you cut it and you find out that there is rot and something happening within immediately what was once a beauty and a delight will only be good for the dustbin you're going to pray everything fighting fruitfulness in my life in whatever manner I curse it tonight by the God of heaven go ahead and pray everything fighting fruitfulness in ministry fruitfulness in destiny fruitfulness in career I curse it by the Spirit of the Living God. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Shalika pas kebrande kebereka tosiata. Hallelujah. Let me give us two more prayer points before we sit. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I know that you are used to receiving an impartation for speed, but you are going to pray it. Hallelujah. God can bring acceleration to a man's life. And there are many ways he does that. Number one is by making all grace abound towards you. All the resources that you need usually motion listen to me motion is impeded when the resources to make for speed is not there for instance if you are building and you do not have the money to complete it the building remains at the level of your last supply if it is 10 years it remains there but there are times that resources can come and you can build and finish in a moment are we together you are in ministry and there is bankruptcy of the grace that should produce results and bring increase and expansion always. If that grace is not there, the ministry will be pegged to reflect the last level of supply. You're going to pray that God will bring acceleration. Most of us here have vehicles and most of us drive. Hallelujah. When you drive, there usually are two components that your feet is responsible for maneuvering. One is called the brake. The other is called the accelerator. When you leave your house and the moment the green light is clear for you, especially when you are aware that you are late for a program or for an interview, you make use of that provision in your car called an accelerator. Are we together? 
and the accelerator helps you to catch up and sometimes so that you are able to beat time lord accelerate my life that is the prayer you are going to pray many of us you are not experiencing stagnation but you are too slow everything about your life is too slow lift your voice and cry to the god of heaven accelerate my life make sure you pray with understanding i can't waste my destiny accelerate my life oh god accelerate my life bring establishment to my life bring stability to my life accelerate 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 my life koinonia you are praying accelerate my life by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Final prayer. Matthew 6, 7. But when you pray, it says use not vain repetition as the heathen for they think that they will be heard for their much speaking next verse be not therefore like unto them for your father knoweth what things you have need of even before you ask him but then it says when you pray pray in this manner go ahead our father which art in heaven hallowed be your name verse 10 thy kingdom come thy will be done in the earth as it is in heaven now verse 11 shout it with all your heart give us this day one more time give us this day if god said this day may your lack of faith not make it this month may your lack of faith not make it next year listen he said give us this day our there is something called daily bread. Daily bread. Bread there does not just talk about what you make with flour. It means the requisite provisions that make for your efficiency per day. God is that meticulous. He said, you already said you, he, you called him father. That means for every day of your life, the moment you are waking up, the angels are positioned. They have been sent to make sure that all that is responsible for your efficiency is there. But I can knock your door trying to give you a parcel and as a result of lack of discernment or you are not even in the house, you may not receive it. We are going to pray this prayer. Give it to us again. Verse 11, give me this day my daily bread. Lord, by faith and with every sense of gratitude, I cry. Give my family this day. Give my ministry this day. Open your mouth and pray. You will marvel and wonder at what happens to you as a result of this prayer. Lord, give me this day. Send me help from Zion this day. All that it takes for my efficiency. Give me this day, not this month, not this year, not this decade, not this century. Give me this day. Give me this day. For in Jesus' mighty name I pray. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Let me remind you before we sit down 
that we're not gathered tonight to an idol. Idols cannot speak. Idols cannot move. Idols cannot save. Idols must be carried by those who worship them. That already is a revelation of weakness. Anything you must carry to help you cannot help you. Hallelujah. But we are gathered to the king immortal. It says, now unto the king immortal, invincible, the only wise God. It is from his light that we see light. Why am I telling you this? Because Hebrews 11 and verse 6 says, For without faith it is impossible to please him, that whosoever comes to God must come believing that he exists, and then that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. May God bless you. You are welcome tonight. Please be seated. Welcome to our miracle service for the month of September. The Lord is going to be doing a very quick work tonight. Hallelujah. I got this ministration in my spirit as I prepared for tonight that the Lord will be doing a very quick work in our lives. The second thing I want you to know, please let me have your attention. There is a gift that God wants to give everybody this night and I want you to please pay attention as I explain it to you. God gives gifts to men. Hallelujah. When gifts are given, your own assignment is to learn how to receive and to learn how to use. When gifts are given, if I give you the gift of an expensive phone, an expensive watch, an expensive gadget, I have done my own part to give you. There are two things you must do. You must know how to receive it and then you must know how to use it. You can receive a gift. I have the privilege by the grace of God of having many gifts that have been given to me by several people, some necessary for my life, but some not necessary. And there are gifts that I received with gratitude, but they've not been able to profit me today because I either do not know how to use them, I've not paid attention to learn how to use them, or I have not found them necessary as far as my life is concerned. But they are still called gifts, even though unused. It's not enough to be excited that there are things that God wants to give us. We must know how to receive and then how to make manifest that which God has given. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I always take time to pray. Um, many of us may never have an idea of the amount of time that is invested preparing for every service and then more importantly the miracle service. I take, I think I, I heard this from a great man of God who said one of the reasons why they do the things that they do in the church is because number one, they take God seriously, they take his work seriously and they take his people seriously. When I heard that, I said, this is a beautiful presentation that when you take God seriously, when you take his people seriously, and when you take his work seriously, there are certain kinds of preparations you will not but make. Hallelujah. And while I prayed, I heard the word freedom. I kept hearing that word freedom, freedom 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 i heard that word more than seven times as i prayed and i knew that this was the direction that god was taking us to so i'll just share a few things and then we'll trust god tonight beyond the healing beyond the miracles beyond praying on your request tonight truly is a service to receive that means nobody's hand should be empty at the end of this service there are things that God has by himself. There's something called a souvenir. When you go for a wedding or some priority program with serious, responsible, especially wealthy people, you don't go there just to get the souvenir, but while you are seated, 
you will find some gentlemen or ladies well dressed in a beautiful apparel moving with gifts and they drop it they hand it over to you that becomes the evidence that you went for that program am i right so when you go rejoicing they look at it and say wow you went for this man's birthday or you went for this wedding or you went for this occasion there are certain souvenirs that you must carry god who is the host of this meeting has come with certain things to give men and you should not go back with your hands empty and they ask you where was your portion and you say carelessness made me leave it in church freedom write this down i define freedom or freedom is defined as a state of not being imprisoned or enslaved freedom is defined as a state of not being imprisoned or enslaved it's the first definition i want you to have as touching freedom a state of not being imprisoned or enslaved that any individual who is free from being on um, imprisoned or enslaved can be said to experience freedom another definition freedom is a state of not being subject to or affected by freedom is a state of not being subject to or affected by you are as free to the degree to which you are not being subject to or affected by freedom i will repeat myself number one is a state of not being imprisoned or enslaved number two freedom is a state of not being subject to or affected by in this case the vicissitudes of life the influence of demonic forces you are not subject to nor affected by them an example of this was seen in the life of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The Bible tells us that these were men that the fire had no power over. Hallelujah. It is God's desire for every believer to experience liberty. Liberty that is in Christ. Liberty that is in Christ. Liberty that is in Christ. Give us Galatians, I believe, 3 and verse 1. Galatians 3 or Colossians. Is it Colossians or Galatians? It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. That should be Colossians. It just came to my spirit. Please find it for me. Colossians 3, I believe, verse 1. Did I get that right? Media, help me. It is for freedom, the Bible says, that Christ has set us free. It says we should hold fast to that freedom so that we are not entangled. 5 verse 1. Thank you. Give me amplified. I like what amplified says. Galatians 5 verse 1. It says, in this freedom, Christ has made us free and completely liberated us. It says, stand fast then. So it starts by giving you an information that it is for freedom that Christ has made you free. That means everything he went through for you at the back of his mind was that you'll be liberated and free indeed. And then he says your responsibility now is to stand fast then and do not be hampered and held and snared and submit again to the yoke of slavery which you have once put off. Contextually he was speaking about going back to the law but now this applies to every area of life. It is for freedom, he says, that Christ has made us free. Our assignment is to stand fast in that liberty and refuse that we be not ensnared again to the things that we once were free from. If we are together, say amen. amen. Now, Isaiah 55, Isaiah 55 and verse 9. Profound scripture there. It says, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. My goodness, I'm praying that someone's eyes will see something now. It says, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. That means there are two kinds of ways. There is God's way, a higher and more superior way. And then there are ways that are carved out, out of man's experiment, man's pride, or man's imagination. My ways, he said, 
my ways of doing anything are higher than your ways, more superior than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Verse 10. It says, for, oh, give us verse, verse 9 again. Let me read verse 9, then I connect it to verse 10. As the heavens are higher than the earth. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've had the privilege to fly, there are times that you will be surprised the distance between earth and heaven. You can be as much as 40, 45,000 feet above sea level. And yet, you are literally suspended. To those who are on the ground, you are in heaven. But to you, you are just midway in the sky. You are not even close to it. And the Bible says, as far as the heaven is from the earth, it says that is how superior God's way is to the way of man. Verse 10. For as the rain cometh down from that distance, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and make it bring forth, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. Verse 11, it says, So shall my word be, that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Do you know what this is saying? God is saying that there, you have two options at any point in your life. You can follow the way of men, carved out by their imaginations and their limitations. Or you can subscribe to a way more superior, a way more intelligent, a way more profitable, a way more time redeeming God's way. Hallelujah. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 23 and 24, Apostle Paul was mentoring the church in Corinth and he said, but we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. 24 now, he says, but unto them which are called, includes all of us, both Jews and Greek. I have taught you Christ, the anointed, the anointing is revealed as the power of God and the wisdom of God. This is very profound. That the anointing of the Spirit is always revealed in the midst of God's people as the power of God and then as the wisdom of God. I want to talk a bit about the wisdom of God because this is the gift tonight that God wants to give everyone. Psalm 104 verse 24. Psalm 104 verse 24. Let's read together. Ready? Shout it as loud as you can. One to read. Oh Lord. How manifold are thy works in wisdom thou hast made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. One last time. Oh Lord, how manifold are thy works. It says, in wisdom thou hast made. Now, when God wants to make you great, I want you to listen to me. When God wants to make a man great, there are two things that God does in the life of that man. Number one, God reveals his will to you. This is the first thing God does in ascending men from a realm of defeat, mediocrity, their lowly estates, to a realm where they rise and they are able to shine indeed. The first thing that God does to a man is to reveal his will. Because I have told you that everything in God's economy answers to his will. So your, your first part of call in making progress with God is to know his will for your life or for whatever matter, number one. The second thing that God does is that the moment he brings you to the awareness of his will, he grants you access to the wisdom that is hidden in him that will bring that will to pass. Listen to me. Knowing the will of God for your life, for your finances is not enough. If that will is not connected to the wisdom, the wisdom there reveals the strategy allocated to make that which he has told you come to pass. There are many, many people who have become endless victims and limited by God said. Their God said was not wrong, but they only stayed in the realm of knowing the will of God without accessing the wisdom that translates what he has said to what you now see. 
Are we together now? The assignment of what the Bible calls the wisdom of God is the strategy given to all men as a gift from God to tell you what to do, how to act, how to navigate your way until you translate the will of God from that which is finished in the spirit to that which is made manifest in your life. Those whose lives become a sign and a wonder are men who number one by the privilege of God's grace have access the will of God the knowledge of his will but number two through the agency of the word of God and the spirit they have mastered the art of drawing from the depth of his wisdom and out of that wisdom they produce results that are extraordinary you must learn to tap into the wisdom that is allocated for your greatness the bible talks about it and calls it the hidden wisdom of god the bible says that has been kept for our glory that means imagine that you go to a place just just using your mind that you step into a place in heaven and you see the names of people joshua selman this is what he should become great prosperous impactful for the kingdom that is God's will. But when you open that file, you will find attached to that file a dimension of wisdom that will make what he has said come to pass. Your first miracle is knowing what God has written through the eons of time that this is what I desire to do with your life. But number two is having access to the wisdom that makes it manifest. Most pastors, most ministries, most great people have either not found the will of God for their lives, for their jobs, for that which they are pursuing, or number two, have been bankrupt of the wisdom from the Spirit to know how to translate prophetic speakings to become a reality. The first thing the Lord revealed to Joshua through Moses was the fact that it was the will of God for him to man the helm of affairs of the leadership now to take God's people experientially to the promised land hallelujah but the moment they got to Jericho it would have been a costly assumption that would have led to their defeat if Joshua tried to invent the strategy by himself Joshua was not in ignorance as to what God desired to produce but he needed the wisdom of God their victory were dependent on knowing the wisdom of God and the Bible says that they circumcised themselves and when that happened the captain of the Lord's army appeared and gave Joshua a strategy and it was by that strategy they brought Jericho down no amount of human thinking would have suggested going around a city as the formula for defeating such a formidable city this is the wisdom of God as far as the heavens are from the earth I meditated upon this and while I began to pray myself and say, Lord, I pray that your people will understand that for many of them here, the missing link connecting where they are to where they need to be. Thank God for favor. Thank God for destiny help us. Thank God for all of these things. But you see, it is the wisdom of God. Imagine the wisdom of God like the veins and the arteries in your body. Are we together now? Imagine a human body without veins, without arteries. There is no possibility of transporting oxygen, transporting food, nourishment from one part of the body to the other. That, that, that nerve that connects the entire body is called the wisdom of God. Imagine if you had to feed your brain, then feed your eyes, then feed your hand, and then feed... No, 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 no. All you need to do is just let the food get to the right place and there is already a design by the wisdom of God where every part of the body receives the supply that comes from you. Are we together? That even when you need medical help, they don't inject you in every part of the body. Just one part of the body and it finds its way to heal and treat every other part of the body. This is how wisdom is. There are many people who have different aspects of their lives dying continually. And it is because of the deficiency of the wisdom of God. Hmm. Daniel chapter 2 from verse 19 to 23. Let's read Amplified. 
We talk a lot about the man Daniel. Daniel was a mighty prophet of God. Daniel was used by God to do several things in Babylon. One of such was the interpretation of the king's dream. Watch this. The Bible says in Daniel 2.19, then we're reading to 23. Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a vision of the night. Watch the wisdom of God. And Daniel blessed the God of heaven. 20. And Daniel answered and said, go ahead and let's read together. Blessed be the name of God forever and ever for wisdom and might are his. 21. Still reading together. He changes the times and seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. 22. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. The final verse. I thank you and I praise you, O God of my fathers, who has given me what? wisdom and might and made known to me now what we desire of you for you have made known to me the solution to the king's problem look up please when god wants to help you let me repeat myself for your understanding number one he reveals his will because if you are outside the will of god i told you that the power of god cannot support you in defiance to the will of God. Then number two, you need the wisdom of God. I have taught you that in scripture there are four kinds of wisdom. There is wisdom that comes from above. There is sensual wisdom. Wisdom that is scientific. Number three, there is natural wisdom. Wisdom that is a product of age and experience, instinct. And then there is devilish or demonical wisdom. We are talking here about superior wisdom that is from above. You want to build anything great in your life? That is a kind of wisdom that must come upon your life. You want to make acceleration and progress in life and destiny? That is the kind of wisdom. I have discovered that many people who come to church are not really sick in terms of bodily deformities but most people are in need of strange solutions solutions that cannot be found by the wisdom of god uh, the wisdom of men it will take superior wisdom how do i move from where i am to the next level of my life most of the prayer requests here i have taught you that most prayer requests of members carry financial issues then perhaps health issues and then various issues that require solutions solutions in office solutions in your life and destiny how to bring yourself from point a to point b the believer was not left without wisdom from god please listen carefully it would be a dangerous thing and it would be unfair for God to put us in this complicated world that is made up of all kinds of people and then give everybody a will and yet not grant us access to superior wisdom. Being a sign and a wonder I wrote here demands an encounter with the wisdom of God and the power of God. Being a sign and a wonder demands an encounter with the wisdom of God and the power of God. Being a sign and a wonder demands an encounter with the wisdom of God and the power of God. There are many people who have encountered the power of God correcting all kinds of things in your body. But most people have not accessed superior wisdom. And let me tell you the truth, wisdom is connected to mighty works. Behind every extraordinary manifestation through the life of the saints is this mysterious wisdom of God. Show me a man who has accessed the wisdom of God or have mastered the dynamics of drawing forth wisdom from God. I show you a man whose life will be an unending wonder. Everything that the Bible shows as a result of the works of God, he credits it to his wisdom. He says, how mighty, manifold that the works. In wisdom, thou hast made them all. Most believers are bankrupt of wisdom. We have education because you went to school. 
and you passed through a system learned along a field of study and you were certified and with all due respect most people believe that their lives will magically change because they are holding certificates in their hands or their lives will magically change because they are people of wonderful maybe character and that is important or their lives will magically change because they feel they are old enough to get a job or old enough to make progress in light of the decadence in our world, in light of the sentiments and the prejudices in our world, none of these things have the power in themselves to give you an edge. The edge of the believer in this bedeviled world is access to the will of God, access to the wisdom of God, and access to the power of God. You want to become a sign and a wonder, includes your church, your family, your children, your endeavor. You are going to have to tap into a higher way there is a way that cement right unto a man the Bible says but the end thereof are the ways of death you have tried the way of sending a text to an uncle and say can you give me a job you have tried the way of borrowing money and you have gotten into trouble you have tried the way of trying to just use publicity materials to say come to my church these things are not wrong you are a sincere person trying it but I'm proposing to you tonight that God wants to give you a gift that ends ordinary living in your life it, that when you a man accesses the wisdom of God nothing about his life becomes ordinary again believe me when I tell you this is. there is always a signature that he has followed a higher way you can trek to Lagos that is a way that leads to Lagos you may arrive you may not arrive you can use a bike to go to Lagos you can use a car and go to Lagos and perhaps you may be a victim of armed robbers on the way perhaps because of bad road or bad weather it can affect you perhaps something can happen to the tire there can be a mechanical fault are we together but then you can take a flight that is another route that someone can be on his bed sleeping and you tell him goodbye I'm going to Lagos and he says I'll wait for you there and you leave in the morning and later on in the afternoon he just stretches himself and jumps into an aircraft and in 50 minutes exactly he's landed in Lagos and you still find him still sleeping in another location while you're on your way going the difference is not the sincerity of your heart you are both sincere people but you have chosen different routes based on the resources available are we together now listen very carefully so the man who is on the road sweating imagine a woman with three or four children all making noise and disturbing everybody in the car but you are limited to that based on the resources you have then the driver can decide to park by nine o'clock and say he feels there are armed robbers if you are courageous come and carry the car and take the other people to lagos or the driver can say i am tired i either drive sleep on the way and kill all of you or we are patient till five o'clock before we continue the journey he will just apologize but many things now are at risk because you, you, are, you could not get there at the time you wanted to. Two things. The method of transportation you chose that is a reflection of the resources within you. Am I toge are we together now? Whereas another person, you can find children jumping in the plane, disturbing people, but they are still going at that pace because their parents made a choice for them and they are benefiting from that choice crying but on their way 50 minutes exactly and they're in Lagos they arrive there and you can have the time you can arrive happy people greet you they are cautious on your way home what is the difference now I'm not I'm not from a physical standpoint I'm not looking down on this too I hope you understand me I'm just showing you the superiority of the routes trying to contrast what the Lord has said you can choose a path to life that makes people hate Jesus by looking at your life now, God will honor you because you use your will to choose that choice, to make that choice. And so it's a life of hardship, a life of struggling, up and down, pain, no victory, one battle after the other for the rest of your life. Or you can make up your mind and say, I have spent 25 years of my life trying this route. I have spent 30 years of my life trying this route. Now I want to choose a more superior path 
the way of the Lord, the way of wisdom, and then you align with God's way, ladies and gentlemen, you can take a flight with God that in no distant time, you can arrive in ministry, arrive in life. You see, there is nothing like too late with God. Too late is relative to the path you take. Are we together now? Now, do you know, as powerful as flight is, even in physics, there is something called telepathy where you disappear, you are not, and you are in a moment. At least your sci-fi movies have it, and then the Bible also tells us a few men who manifested that. Are we together? You are not, and then you are in a moment. That, that is a possibility with God, that a man can walk with God and choose that level of wisdom, and that by the next moment, God does something in your life that people will have to call you and say, listen, I do not know you going to harbor lists. I do not know you collecting charms. What is responsible for this kind of result? And you tell them, no, I didn't, I didn't meet a herbalist. I found out that there is a level of wisdom that can come. Ah, please believe me. Please believe me. You do ministry with that wisdom, get ready to, to soar in a flight where your life becomes an inspiration to many. You ignore that wisdom and see how hard your life will be and see how much of pain you will accumulate all through your lifetime. With my life, we'll raise your banner high, we'll shine your light so bright, we'll sing. Listen, I submit to you with all humility. I look at my life today and I look at the bits that God has done and is doing in my life and this ministry and it can only be the wisdom of God. I can tell you points in my work with God where I will show you how to tap that wisdom shortly. But when that wisdom comes, like a visitor knocking at your door, you know that with that, vi with that wisdom, victory has come. With that wisdom, a solution has come. Until his word came, the Lord tried him. You remain until the word comes. But when it does come, you have found your way out of any situation. Do you believe what I'm telling you? Because I'm saying that because many of you right now, most of your prayer point is shrouded in one word, confusion. What do I do? How do I, I know what I want? I know what I desire. I know how to move from point A to, uh, I know that I should move from point A to point B. But how in the world am I going to cross this Red Sea? How in the world am I going to leap over a wall? How in the world am I going to run to a troop that midwives where I am and my place of destiny? The answer is found in the wisdom of God. We raise your banner high. I shine your light so bright. I'll sing in honor of you. I will raise your banner high. the 
thousands that are gathered today tens of thousands and many following across the globe ladies and gentlemen what you see happening in this ministry is not just the effort of a man is the simplicity of tapping into wisdom wisdom that is not Sophia wisdom that is not human I remember many listen 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 I have shared with you once upon a time we went for a crusade and the money to even pay the venue to pay the hotel and pay the transport was not there same God same people no wisdom you can call it process no problem all things work together but the missing link was wisdom the wisdom of God we held that crusade that time where less than maybe less than 50 people can you imagine that less than 50 people there about did the best we knew how to do but the missing link was tapping into the wisdom of God yet there were visions of nations yet there were visions of mighty things do you know that in that vision you were there but how were you going to come the wisdom of God did I know you did I know your address look the burden I would have to go through looking for you one by one leave that to the wisdom of God the resources you need, the influence you need is hidden in accessing the wisdom of the Spirit. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? I want God to really change your life tonight. It's a miracle service, but you listen. Because many people just shout amen and go back and nothing changes. When I was praying and I heard that freedom, I knew that what most people need is how to access the wisdom of God. I told you, one time the Lord came to me and here was the revelation. He said, son, this is a strategy for you. It's not a strategy for everybody. You would do it and it will not work because it is the wisdom of God that is connected to his will for you. That is why blindly copying is a, a recipe for disaster. Hallelujah. And here's what he told me. Carry your teachings, audio teachings. That time we didn't have any sound to edit. You listen to some of those teachings, you need a lot of endurance. Powerful revelation, but with all kinds of noise, sometimes the volume will go up and down, but that was what we could do at that time. And yet he said, take that teaching. He says, put it online. My angel will take it to the nations and with it I will announce you the wisdom of God. That childlike obedience is what has birthed this level of influence that you see today. Now somebody will blindly go and do that and put everything online and all you will get is an insult from people. And who do you think you are? And people just insult you until you withdraw it back because to you, you are just copying in the flesh. It did not come. That is not the strategy allocated for your victory. Never take any step until you know what God's will is and you have received the wisdom to make what he has said come to pass. God can give you a vision and in that vision you will see a, a duplex. That is God's will for you. He's saying I want to establish you. Let me tell you what most people do. They receive the will and then they choose the strategy by themselves. That is why they fail. So the person gets up and immediately he goes to collect. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. But he goes to collect a loan of 50 million, 100 million and he says I know what I saw. God told me. Now the person did not see a lie, but he did not stay with the spirit. Everything that comes from God to your spirit, I am telling you, what you see, if it's only the will of God that you received, the package was not complete. There is still another package coming. The wisdom connected to his will. Hallelujah. When we came to Abuja, you've, you've heard the story. I said these things to inspire you. It's always been a second home, but now coming to do ministry. Lord, how is this going to happen? But those who know God find rest. Anything he says, you are not afraid of the size of what he has said because there is a wisdom component that is going to come. The moment it lands, it deflates every difficulty. And I began to pray, preparing, pray. And the Spirit of God began to search the mind of God. When you designed for the next level of koinonia, dear father, what was the strategy? And there it was. That file was found in the Spirit. And when it was opened, because he said, Lo, I come as it is written of me in the volume of the book to do your will. 
it was found and the Lord came to me again get the map of Abuja get the map of Nigeria get the map of Africa and get the map of the world begin to pray on it with childlike faith I started rejoicing I kept praying pray that was my assignment as simple as it is that was a wisdom I remember one time many years in Zaria the Lord gave me an instruction and I trekked from a very long distance and all I was doing was just speaking and trekking till I got to some very far distance and that was the strategy that gave us dominion within that city can I tell you when you meet spiritual men their pathway does not reconcile with science many times but you wait and watch the result that comes out of it the Bible says to those who are called both Greeks and Jews Christ is the power of God and Christ is the wisdom of God I began to pray and one thing led to the other today look what God is doing and this is only the beginning hallelujah by the way let me apologize I promised last week that I was going to officially launch you know the, the project and the funds I just decided to be patient to allow those involved there are still a few things they need to put together and I thought it was good for them to put everything together before we officially make that announcement so pardon me I, I, I even forgot my sincere apologies for those who have been waiting to give just be patient and hopefully when they tidy up everything want to do everything excellently and then to launch it with understanding so just keep praying and I'm sure that everything will be tidied up soonest but but are we still together the wisdom of God so for someone you can be praying trusting God to increase your business and once you are praying the Lord shows you the picture I want to lift you I want to bless you but Lord how is this going to happen God can give you an instruction it can come as the wisdom of God this is what you call Rema it's not just a word spoken from God the wisdom of God allocated see the Rema word of God is not applicable to everybody it is bespoke to you it comes to you as a solution to whatever predicament it is the reason why you cannot create doctrines out of it because it was a word specified for your situation you can share and God can give others instruction to obey exactly that can become a rema word for them too but until he speaks it cannot be called the wisdom of God now can I tell you this the purpose of studying scripture is not just to see it's not just to learn is that his voice will come out through what you are studying and he will say something to you from scripture that relates to your now situation the purpose of prayer like I'll be teaching you the Bible says that we have access to the hidden wisdom of God that when we submit ourselves to prayer when it is time for miracle service what I do is I just start praying in the spirit every service really but I'm praying in the spirit and sometimes there are already impressions in my spirit now I plan but there are times because I do there are tens of thousands of people how for God's sake do you know this person's problem if you are guessing you will find out that at the end of it you will guess and you will not bless up to hundred people out of all the people that came and you keep walking like that get ready for empty pews because the people who come to you will not be blessed but you can see sometimes God can give one word of knowledge and you find 20 people come out this is the wisdom of God he knows what their problems were. You watch our video while we're in, I think it was in UK or so. One of the phenomenal words of knowledge that God gave. And then the number of people plus the clothes they were wearing. And all of them came carrying that kind of thing. You don't guess that kind of thing. Not in a territory like that. The hidden wisdom of God that was designed for our glory father what do I need to do for the next level of my life why is ministry grounded this way there has to be a way out the first thing I need you to know is that for any problem you are confronting now please find a way of convincing yourself that there is a way out say there is a way out let the devil hear it say there is a way out yes sir you are not the first to go through financial problems marital problems problems with children problems with ministry all of this the Bible says the thing that is is the thing that was and the thing that will be 
with respect to the dealings of men, there is nothing new under the sun. Those who walked out of all their challenges received wisdom from God. Others made blind assumptions to their detriment. The gift that God wants to give you tonight is to grant you an understanding to know how to access his wisdom for all things and all matters in your life. And I'm telling you, you would have gotten a key tonight. You walk out, you stand before storms and challenges and you will smile in advance. Even though you don't know the way out, you pity what is standing in front of you because for as long as the wisdom of God arrives, every mountain must be made low. Hallelujah. When it had to do with finances in this ministry, with all due respect and to the glory of God, I'd seen ministries struggle and suffer, manipulate people, and I said, God, I vow a vow that I will never manipulate and deceive your people because of the issue of resources. But the truth is that you will need resources to do the work of the kingdom. Being a person of integrity is not enough. It takes integrity and ability. And then he brings a strategy. And to God be the glory for what he's doing today. You see that? When it had to do with the manifestation of the anointing. I remember one time I was praying. Praying and asking God. That was when he took me to that scripture that says follow them who through faith and patience. For me, it did not come as a Bible verse. It came as the wisdom of God. He's saying there's no point inventing the wheel when it has already been invented. There are men who I have worked with. That's when God showed me that the way he distributes graces in the world is that every time he wants to bless a generation, he creates a portal of spiritual possibility through a person and anoints that person by covenant and that person becomes his official distribution system of that grace. Nobody will access that dimension of grace ignoring the position of that individual. Hallelujah. So if you want to step into the healing ministry today, you will be surprised even if you are in a village, God will find a way of making you have access to men like Benny Hinn even if not directly through their materials, because by the privilege of the election of grace, they have become custodians of the mysteries of the kingdom. When you want to access wisdom, God will make you to have access to men like Dr. Mike Mudok, the true apostle of wisdom living on earth today. Now it is up to you to discern. You can walk in a lot of foolishness and say, I must see Jesus myself. And foolishness will make you to not even be alive before you see him. Are we together? Mm. There are men who embody certain possibilities. That when you find out that your life, things are going haywire in your life. Your prayer life is going down and all of that. There are vessels that when you encounter. I remember one time I gave you the story. That I went for a program and they kept me in the guest house in prayer city. When they kept me in that guest house, I waited for everybody to go later when it was in the night. I just sneaked out like an armed robber. And I went to the ground and I said, Father, you give men graces. A place that prays 24 hours nonstop and has been doing it before you were born and they've not stopped till today. There must be a grace there. Father, let that grace land upon this head because there are many things that I need. When I listened to the material of Dr. Mike Mudok, well, mediocres were busy criticizing. Some of us were discerning and judging by the Spirit. And we saw that, you see, the truth is that when God has chosen, He has chosen. Yours is to believe and align or argue and perish. Are we together now? And some of us with the simplicity, knowing the, this dimension of God's wisdom, I started to pursue individuals by the grace of God and by the Spirit of God that we're not is one thing to be a career but it's another thing to be God's conduit point of manifesting that possibility hallelujah yeah there are many 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 people 
Many people who have not tapped into this wisdom as a man of God. You can see every man of God and just believe we're all colleagues. After all, we're preaching. High five, high five. And you greet, share the grace and go back. And no door is opening. I wish I were not the one teaching this. But you see, this is not human worship. I told you one time by the grace of God, I was praying. We had begun to experience increase, but I knew there was a greater level. And the Lord gave me an instruction. He said, soon I will tell you. And when that time comes, you will go and meet God's servant, Bishop Oedipo. And there is something, there is a grace that you are going to receive. I remember that morning, God just told me, this is the day. I got up and I was on my way to Lagos. I carried a seed. You know, there are seeds that when you carry bar, even the devil cannot stop you. The weight of, you, you, he's going to clear the way and say, the kind of determination this man is coming with. Let me attack tomorrow, not today. And by the privilege of God's grace, I had the honor of going there, did whatever I had to do. And when I came out, there in Canaan land, the Lord told me, place your hand on the ground. I placed my hand there. And he said, from today, you have entered the overflow anointing. Can I tell you, when you carry certain graces, it shows. If you have to tell people you carry it, you don't have it. Are we together? A woman who is nine months pregnant and said, don't play with me, I'm pregnant, is most likely lying. Because even if it's a rabbit you are carrying, at nine months, it will be clear. Am I right on that? The meaning of all this is that in the name of Jesus, whatever has stopped you from moving forward, there is a wisdom that must land on your destiny this night. <laughs> Whilst we're preparing for the building project, I will announce to you, I just said, Lord, building projects of ministries a size like this, I mean, it's going to be so enormous and it is you that grants wisdom. Please, I don't want to ever assume I am still your boy, oh. I've not graduated myself to become your colleague. I'm still that boy you found. So come to me as a father and help me. And here was the Lord. Came and brought a strategy. And said with this strategy, absolutely nothing will stop you. And I said, this is it. Absolutely. It's not pride. It's the truth. So you see, those who access the wisdom of God, when you look at them, they will turn around. You will think, what, what exactly about your life produces that result? It is not you. It is something within you and something upon you. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry your mind. Your mind is so full of me. I'm taking out time to teach you. I'm, I'm sure you're surprised that I'm teaching seriously during a miracle service because I want you, this is what God told me. If it's freedom you are looking for, for many of us, what you need to do is to pray and say, Lord, I will wait until it comes. What is the it? Not just the will of God. You already know what is the strategy. Some of you started running without the strategy. You just felt God has called me into ministry. On your mark set, you shot the gun by yourself. Now you've been running in cycles for years. Spiritual men stay till they receive the will and the wisdom. The will and the wisdom. Lord, there has to be a way. Now they've increased school fees. Two times the amount. Three times the amount. Lord, you've given me two children and you gave me 11 others from my relatives. You are the one who asked me to take care of them. There must be a way. Instead of saying, I'm tired, 10 of you are going back to the village and you, you destroy somebody who God was supposed to raise through you. The problem is not the economy. I'm telling you sincerely. The problem is the strategy. You have not received it yet. Lord, what is the strategy for survival? There has to be a way. And in the midst of that prayer, God can give you an instruction. Send a text to this person and just greet him. Don't ask for money. Don't do anything. And you send that text at that point. If you miss that point, you have missed that season. The wisdom of God is God who knows what is connecting. And the person just calls you and says, you, can you imagine? 
your feet is ordered by the Lord. Oh, we are in the middle of it. Do you have a job? He said, no. He said, come. NLNG asked me to bring two people. Are you ready to be the first person? And you just say, I, I was lucky. You were not lucky. It was the wisdom of God. It's naive people that call it luck. Do you know, I have taught you how prophecy happens in the life of people. When I speak over your life and say in the name of Jesus, let doors be open. Once you receive it, the Holy Spirit moves upon your life as the spirit of wisdom. It is the wisdom of God that translates prophecy to become manifestation. The wisdom of God guides you, leads you, brings a feeling in your heart. I should just go and buy bread in the shop. Why did you not wait till evening? What is suddenly making you want to go to the mall to buy bread? It's not your desire. It's the wisdom of God in partnership with prophecy. As soon as you get into that mall, here is a manager also shopping. If you were to come to his office, the PA will drive you. But God made you to meet in the mall. And you say, good afternoon, ma. Please, can you help me? And she says, ah, this is the wrong place. But I don't know you collect my number. Listen, let me tell you the truth. If you are waiting for one to add to one to equals two, get ready to suffer in this wicked world. The probability for your rising will be just a little above zero. But tap into the wisdom of God and watch the things that look like coincidences. I have met people today who have become marvelous advantages in my life. Some of them, I remember a man of God who wanted to meet me, true story, or was it a man, a businessman? And he was sitting down and then we were, we were traveling somewhere and all of a sudden I just sit down and this man is saying, praise God. Praise God. He could not believe it. He said, Apostle, let me tell you the truth. I've been praying to meet you and it was very difficult. I knew if I come for Koinonia, it would be difficult. But now you are sitting down near me and for all through this flight, two of us are not going anywhere. Now is the opportunity for the guy. Now It may look like a coincidence, but ask why you were not the one sitting there. Hallelujah. God himself. I told you a story here, a true story. And I'm not encouraging lateness or inefficiency. But someone who woke up late to go, you know, to I think some interview or so. And he woke up late. He was already, he, he already knew that that was over for him as far as the job is concerned. Do you know that lateness in his sincerity of heart, he was praying and saying, Lord, forgive me. And he gets to the elevator and finds out that the GM was also going up. He came later and he, co he collided with the man and he started pleading and saying, sir, I'm late. And the man said, no problem. He held his hand and he was the first to get that job. Now, ladies and gentlemen, hear me. I'm not saying you go late, you will not meet any GM. So let's balance this now. I'm speaking to the whole world. Because the Bible said, be careful how you hear. Believers are funny people. They can hear something else while you are shouting another thing. So let me just say it. I'm not encouraging laziness. But I'm saying this is how determined God can go to make his wisdom speak for you. If you know this, you will not cry over situations as though there were no hope. Because the Bible says, for we know that all things... It is because of this wisdom that all things can work together. Hallelujah. People have, people have met, collided with miracles in strange places. Hallelujah. Do you believe what I'm telling you? I know a man, true story, who found his business partner at a funeral. They went to bury somebody and while people were crying, he just sat down and one thing led to the other. They started discussing. Today, those people are very, very wealthy people. Funeral. By the privilege of God's grace, there are people God has granted me the privilege and the honor of helping. And it was in strange places, strange circumstances brought them to my life. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. Carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of love. Me. Awesome man, awesome God. You'll be surprised that there's someone who should help you, and the man will vow and say, In the name of Jesus, I will never, never help you. Then one day, the person suddenly starts feeling pain somewhere. 
and they tell the person look the only person we didn't reach to help you is that man you say you don't want to see you don't want to see him but he's carrying an anointing that you need and then I've taught you that every man's need is his point of contact they will invite you and by the time God uses you you were to beg the man for hundred thousand but the man gives you 10 million to say thank you for healing me do you believe what I'm teaching you listen it's time for you to shake away this level of your life make up your mind that Lord I'm tired of dwelling in this realm the wisdom that I need I'm tired of being poor I'm tired of being broke I'm tired of being limited I'm tired of the pain in my heart being afraid of coming out in the morning because I do not have resources or I do not know what to do I am your son I am your child I didn't birth myself here on earth Lord I give you room to take responsibility as Abba Pata over my life let your wisdom come and redefine the next season of my life you may be a man of God stop trying to copy things just because you see it working for others you will copy and waste money and get into trouble Lord grant me wisdom you are the one who gave me this ministry what is the secret what is the strategy as great as this ministry is can you imagine that until now we do not hold conferences and conventions. I'm not daft. I've read a lot of books about church planting. We have a lot of people we have raised by the Spirit of God who are doing great things for the kingdom. I'm not ignorant, I tell you, as to what it makes ministry work. I don't claim to know everything, but by the privilege of God's grace, God has granted us access to the ears and the eyes and the heart of those who know how to make this thing work. Yet, his wisdom, God gave an instruction do not hold conferences, do not hold conventions until I speak to you. And not the size of the ministry will make me ever disobey him. Until he came and said, go and do a conference in the UK. I want to glorify myself through you. And look what he did. You see, let me tell you, the part of a spiritual man is very strange. Except that you cannot deny the results. Cannot deny the results. You cannot deny the results. You are a man of God. God can be leading you. You are raising others and sending them to ministry. And for you, God will say, do not start any work. Sit down. And you will feel insulted. Because if you had started ministry, you will be 10 years, 20 years, having a great ministry. People that you have raised may even be doing great. And God says, sit down. You just obey him all and stay. Watch what his wisdom keeps doing in your life. One step after the other one step after the other for some of you while you want to go somewhere god will give you a scripture and isaac sowed in that land oh abuja is too difficult i need to run away let me go back to my village and god will say no your destiny is here you can choose to disobey me or you can stay here and believe me there is something i want to teach you it's not a job i cannot give you but i am using your situation to train you there is something you need to become you need to know me as jaira hallelujah and sometimes you will stay no food in the morning but you are just praying you are not irresponsible your certificate is there lying and you are praying lord listen can i tell you every time you are tempted to complain turn your complaint to this prayer lord birth your will through this situation you have defeated that situation birth your will through this situation oh i lost a loved one this was the breadwinner in our family lord what do we do now i'm teaching you something birth your will through this situation it's an ancient formula that god taught me you don't see me praying prayers of lamentation and saying god why now <clears throat> the prayer of spiritual men is lord birth your will whether it's through your pain, whether it's through your disappointment, whether it's through your loss, whether it's through your victory. Anything you connect to the will of God no longer becomes a disadvantage. Anything, including death. You lost your loved one, father, mother, brothers, and you are there. Instead of just praying and saying, you know what, God, stop this senator from sleeping. That is witchcraft. Don't pray that kind of prayer until you know what you are saying. Why shouldn't the man sleep? He has a wife and children. Are we together? There are conditions where you pray that prayer. Most of these prayers are prayers of immaturity and selfishness and lust. 
You pray that I shouldn't sleep for your sake. If you mean the work of a shepherd to get up and pray, it's none of your business the time I wake up and pray for you. Just know I'm praying for you. But where you now instruct God that I should not sleep, you, that, that's an antichrist spirit. I'm saying that so we are careful some of these things that we say. I know what you mean. Give him no rest. I understand what you mean. But as you rise to maturity, you need to also hear what you are saying. And if what you are saying is not correct, keep quiet, re-edit your understanding. Are we together? Yeah. Mm. The hidden wisdom of God. 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 Ordained for your glory ordained for your glory ladies and gentlemen i want you to trust me trust what i'm teaching you this is how ordinary men become champions how else do you think men rise you cannot manipulate your way politically to be, to fulfill destiny destiny is not politics no destiny is beyond the academia the variables required for a man's excelling are many. You need the wisdom of God to piece them together to produce victory in your life. One can say yes and another variable can say no and your life is pegged at a, a point for many, many decades. Hallelujah. I believe with all my heart that one of the things that God is doing tonight is giving us profound encounters by the spirit of the living God hallelujah I want to do something very prophetic now and I want you to listen this will usher us into our prayers if I don't get I will pray for the sick and pray for everybody but it will be a quick walk tonight but I want you to listen hallelujah I went to the place of prayer and while I was praying, as I heard the word freedom, I was meditating, meditating, meditating in my spirit. And then all of a sudden, I know when that glory comes. That Shekinah just came and mantled me and covered me. I started shaking like a leaf. And all of a sudden, I found myself singing a song. I started uttering words and songs, songs by the spirit. And I said, what is the meaning of this? The song just began to come by the Spirit. And God told me that it's with this song that he's going to do many things this night. To tell you how serious it is, I'm even going to have to play the song to remember it. I wrote it down and I sent to these guys. And so that you don't think that this is something that is, is I had to do a rehearsal. And I told myself, I said, what is this? And the Lord said, I want to impart, I want to give my people the gift of wisdom. I want you to know how God works. You see, you are a spiritual man, you need to learn to discern. We are organized people, but many people cannot get into prophetic things because you do not know that songs are ladders in the spirit. Sit down, sit down. I've, I've not, listen, I'm going to play it for you. This is, I don't even, until I play it, I may not even remember it. This is before the whole world. This is me recording. Where, I don't know where this volume is. Watch this. Hold on, just a moment. So here's what it sounds like. This was under the anointing by the Spirit of God. I'm going to sing it now for you. You just listen.
Hallelujah. Breathe, Lord. Breathe. Breathe, Lord. Breathe. Breathe upon my life. Breathe, Lord. Breathe. Breathe, Lord. Says, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. Now listen, I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up. Exalted, I receive, I manifest your power, your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified, say, breathe, Lord, breathe, Lord. Fast your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. Say, exalted, 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 exalted. Is a prayer. Will you breathe, Lord? Breathe, breathe, Lord. Breathe, breathe upon my life. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up. Exalted, I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus. Till the nations 
See Jesus lifted up, exalted. That's your prayer now. Breathe, Lord. Breathe. Breathe, Lord. Breathe. Shema Salia Barada. Sing, breathe, Lord. Manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. Lifted up, glorified till the nations see Jesus. Lifted up, one last time now. Say, breathe, Lord, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord. my hands in the name that is above all names there are men and women who will drink of this fountain right now I decree and declare I want you to pick them and bring them out very quickly father you gave me this song by the spirit and you said upon singing it the spirit of wisdom and power will rest upon many for their destinies therefore I stretch my hands at the count of three may this fountain break open one now take that grace now bring them out take that grace now take that grace now breathe lord
see Jesus lifted up, exalted till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified till the nations bring them out, see Jesus lifted up, exalted. Till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe upon my heart. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare every altar that has tied your destiny down I want you to bring them out as God breathes right now some of you a physical wind will blow towards you and in the name of Jesus every ordinance of darkness must give way now Satan by the breath of the Spirit let God's people go now let God's people go now let God's people go now Bring them out, shalakatos, ancestral causes, yokes of darkness, spirits of bondage, familiar spirits that have tied down destinies. I decree and declare, release them now, release them now, release them now. I receive, I manifest your power, your wisdom. Till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest, I manifest your power, your wisdom. Till the nations see Jesus lifted up. The Lord is showing me I'm, I'm seeing a revelation and the Lord is telling me that there is a spirit that has held on to women women in many families their destiny is not just maritally it has tied everything in their life in the name of Jesus as my God breathes upon this congregation every daughter of Abraham who has been bound by witchcraft be released now be released now be released now! Be released now! Elama shabakas kobarakosiata, egra kapas kalika parusiata. Every destiny that has been tied down by witchcraft, at the count of three, you're going to shout the name Jesus. And as you shout that name, that devil must let you go. I like you to be sensitive. Koinonia, are you ready? My father, I pray that by the mystery of this, your wisdom, let the bound be free now. At the count of three, shout Jesus. One, two, three.
mighty hand may that grace rest upon you now 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 receive manifest his wisdom his power receive manifest his wisdom his power receive manifest his power his wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up exalted till the nations see Jesus who is Gabriel I'm hearing the name Gabriel please I want you to be sensitive God is doing a quick walk is there someone called Gabriel very quickly I want to speak to you and then I'm hearing the name Hosea who is Hosea H-O-S-E-A I'll, I'll soon pray for those in front there is an impartation that is happening. Who is Hosea? Your name is Hosea. Where are you coming from? My name is Gabriel, sir. Gabriel, who is Hosea? I'm hearing a name Hosea. The Lord is saying he wants to bring an end to captivity in the family of Hosea. Father, in the name of Jesus, I am praying. Is that the, that's the name of your baby? Gabriel, I will pray for you. Father, I stretch my hands. Para shola ka sega besiata kranti gele suka paria kaparusa sega de shiata basubras I'm hearing that I should prophesy that it returns to you This is not to these guys I'm here I don't know what was taken from you but the Lord is saying I should prophesy therefore I declare everything that left you that should not have left by this anointing it returns now it returns now he returns now. 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 Hosea, I stretch my hands. Every demonic thing that has tied your family. I'm seeing the spirit of death in the family of Hosea and the Lord is saying I should avert that spirit because it comes in circles. It will come, then it will stay. Then help them please. Then it will come back again. I stand by this mantle tonight and I decree and declare that every spirit that is not of the Christ, let it leave the family of Hosea now. Let it leave the family of Hosea now. That is God's mandate for us tonight. It is amazing how God works. The wisdom of the Spirit. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me someone, you are a lawyer. The power of God is coming upon you now as I speak. And the Lord is saying I should tell you that the season of shame is over. You are a lawyer. You are a lawyer in the name of Jesus. Help that person at the back. In the name of Jesus, for that lawyer, captivity comes to an end now. The Lord is asking me to, re to rebuke a pattern that has followed many families. It's a pattern of cancer. All the people go ahead of you right now. There are currently people who have cancer. Everybody's like a string. That's what kills people in the family. I don't know who belongs to such a family. But here at this miracle service, the spirit that kills men through the guise of cancer, it dies right now. It dies right now. It dies right now. Hallelujah. You're going to sing this song two times, just the brief part. You just do what I'm asking you to do. At the end of this, the second time when you sing it, please hear me. I'm going to pray for the sick. We'll work with time. But at the second time, the moment you sing it, I'm hearing the cry of babies. Listen, and the Lord is saying, and I want, I'm saying it in the open. The Lord is saying one of the miracles 
that will begin to manifest in this ministry is extraordinary fruitfulness. People that have been trusting God for children for a long time. I want you to know that this is your prophetic word. It's not a song. It's not a song. Are you ready now? Breathe, Lord. Breathe. Say. Breathe, Lord. Breathe. Breathe upon my life. God for the fruit of the womb lay your hands whether for you or for someone you can stand for someone you are a man you can stand for your wife I want to make this declaration God does not lie in the name of Jesus the gates of fruitfulness that has been locked up either by witchcraft my God I'm just seeing fire burning things that look like threats in the name of Jesus Christ at the instruction of the spirit I decree and declare koinonia here in Abuja and across the globe all those trusting God for the fruit of the womb in the name of Jesus Christ receive your miracle children receive your miracle children receive your miracle children in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord is showing me an impartation that he's doing now is an impartation of the grace for teaching a prophetic dimension of the teaching grace this is not for everybody I don't know why God will interrupt the thing like this but I stretch my hands the grace of a teacher may that grace rest upon you right now the grace of a teacher may that anointing mantle you wherever you are you're a man of God here, I decree and declare the capacity to draw wisdom from the word. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Now hear me, ladies and gentlemen. One of the ways that we draw the wisdom of the spirit is when we engage in prayer even praying in the spirit when we begin to pray in the spirit you are not just sounding and bringing gibberish you are giving the holy spirit room to search the mind of the father and he will bring to you this is how this song came this is how many other things can be transported from the realm of the spirit i want to declare there is a baptism that god wants to do now is a baptism of fire that will help men pray where they are but from the north to the south east to the west all over this auditorium there are people who need to draw forth wisdom from the spirit the grace and the mantle for prayer that will cause you to pray and press into realms until you access wisdom may that grace rest upon you now may that grace rest upon you now May that grace rest upon you now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's someone you came here. You could not move your neck very well. I want you to check yourself now. The power of God has touched you. You are wearing like green or lime, something like that. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. Is there someone like that? Come. Come. Where? Why are they clapping? Check yourself and come. A miracle has happened to you now. Breathe, Lord. Breathe, Lord. Breathe, Lord. Breathe, Lord. Upon my life. Sing, breathe, Lord. I manifest your power, your wisdom to the nations. 
see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest your power, your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. Madam, you have a problem. What, what, did, what was the problem? For some times now, I've been feeling hotness in this side of my body. Just today, the team moved Madam, down. Madam, me. I want, so look at me. I want to pray for you so that we'll save time. I'm seeing that the devil brought stroke. This thing would have led to stroke. You've been feeling half of you. It's as if you feel numbness yes, sometimes. Yes, yes. I want you to stand up. Yes. Check your neck now. Move it. Don't be afraid. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Move it. Any pain. Look at this. Any pain. In the name of Jesus, that devil of darkness that has brought stroke to your body, we command it back to hell where it came from. Back to hell where it came from. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, look at me. I want to pray for you. I'm not a prophet of doom, but I'm looking at you and I'm seeing you inside a coffin and the Lord is saying to bring you out of there. I use Mama as a point of contact. Anyone who has been buried in the spirit, that is only a matter of time. Believe me, I know what I'm seeing that makes me say what I'm saying. In the name of Jesus, anyone who has been buried in the spirit, I declare, come out of that demonic coffin now. Come out of that demonic coffin now. Help my mother. I stretch my hands, mama. In the name that is above all names, you will not die. Hence, God has brought you here tonight. We forbid you from untimely death. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is showing me a family from Edo State. And the Lord is telling me that the power of God is coming upon you. There is a very strange manifestation of witchcraft. Witchcraft that does not allow people rise. This is Edo State. In the name that is above all names. I pray for whoever that person is as may, be, as may apply wherever you are. In the main auditorium, all the overflows are following online. That demonic spirit that comes as a result of territory by the power that raised Christ from the dead be delivered now. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm not a prophet of doom. And I'm usually very careful to make announcements like this. But I'm hearing in my spirit now. And the Lord is saying, announce it openly. The Lord is asking me to pray for one of the senators in this country that he will not fall and go the way of the grave. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not a prophet of doom. I don't come out to waste my time. I have serious things to do. So it's not, I would not speak like this if God did not put it in my heart. I fear God, but I also respect myself. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, hence God has revealed it. We pray for all our serving senators. If there is anyone that the devil wants to bring to the grave, by the mercies of God, we decree and declare, may they be preserved. Yeah. By the mercies of God, may they be preserved. Yeah. One of these, my ushering ladies, I know you people are walking, but the power of God is coming on one of you. God is saying the prayer you have been praying for a long time, that he has brought answers to it. The prayer you have been praying for a long time, the prayer you have been praying for a long time, even though you are ushers, you are serving, but God is saying the prayer you have been praying for a long time that he's bringing answers to it. The prayer you have been praying for a long time. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare as God is touching them, every long-standing prayer point that you have written and written and written and written again, may my God arise and breathe upon that prayer right now. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord is asking me to pray against kidnapping. 
for a particular family. Just lend me a few minutes and we'll be done. It's a very influential family. I'm seeing people conspire and kidnapping this person and asking for a ransom of over 100 million in the name that is above all names. Anybody who wants to kidnap and kill anybody, this one, I'm the one praying, quarter to that time, may the earth open and swallow them. I say it again. I stand as a man of God that anybody conspiring to get any, may the earth open and swallow them. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the earth open and swallow them. Hallelujah. Place your hand anywhere you are trusting God for healing. I want to speak over your life now. All those in front here, there is a woman, Kai, I want to pray for you. Um, because what you, are, what you think is just a lump and pain, I want to cause it. I'm seeing a manifestation and this is something that is cancerous. And the Lord wants me to rebuke it. You just think it's just a lump. But this thing is the devil wanting to put. I hope you know that cancer is a spirit. Do you know that? Please believe it. Any daughter of Abraham here. That the devil has planted any satanic thing in your body. I stand by the God who sent me for your sake. I decree and declare. Tonight cancer dies from your body. Cancer dies from your body 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 in the name of Jesus let me pray for you father anyone here who is sick you came with a sick person you can release your faith and I know that many hospitals graciously follow the miracle service all the hospitals that are following right now you can just allow the patients to make contact just by stretching their hands or if the patients are unconscious you can leave them the loved ones who are there with them can stand I'm about to pray we want to release healing to the nations and to release it here right now please I want you to believe healing is real I am a product of the healing ministry of Jesus I pray right now every spirit that is back of any infirmity it does not matter the name the form the fashion by the power that raised Christ from the dead I declare that spirit leaves your body now that spirit leaves your body now that spirit leaves your body now right now I decree and declare be healed in the name of Jesus blood conditions be healed now ulcers be healed now pile be healed now all kinds of growths in your body I command them to die now any abnormality in your body drying up your bones drying up your blood be healed from it now HIV be healed diabetes be healed arthritis be healed blindness be healed deafness be healed pile be healed kidney problems be healed liver problems be healed heart conditions be healed children with autism be healed migraine headaches be healed cataracts be healed glaucoma be healed colon cancer be healed prostate cancer be healed lung cancer be healed bone conditions be healed joint problems be healed you are here and your SS genotype we change it now in the name of Jesus there's someone you've been suffering a problem of indigestion 
I don't know what it is, but it looks like some kind of gastrointestinal problem. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, I stretch my hands now and I decree and declare, may the power of God touch you right where you are. Touch you right where you are. Touch you right where you are. Now I want to pray for someone I'm seeing in the spirit. Both men and women, from the family you come from, there is a spirit. I'm not asking you to come out. This is the spirit of drunkenness. You love God, oh, but you cannot see alcohol. It's not like whether you are good or bad. I want to pray for you because that thing you see can kill. I'm praying for you. First, the mercy of God, where you have roasted your liver, roasted parts of your body because of consuming some of these poisonous things. May God show you mercy. And then I'm praying right now. Please take it seriously. I curse the spirit of alcoholism. Let it die now in the name of Jesus Christ. And then the Lord is asking me to pray for a family. I can imagine that many families will be connected to this prayer, but particularly, I want to pray for a family that has suffered abject poverty. This is a wicked spirit. Going to school or not going to school does not seem to matter because these are forces that have tied down the family and they love God. In Jesus' name, I cry to the Lord God of heaven, the one who created and made for this convergence, any family that has been down by the spirit of poverty, I come in the volume of the book as it has been written in the name of Jesus as one sent by the Spirit and I declare may that Spirit be banished from your family. May that Spirit be banished from your family. Hallelujah. Banished from your family. Now very quickly we are going to sing this song as a prophetic song. Sing any part you can remember. While we are singing it, please collect the prayer request. Let's just walk with the foolishness of God's wisdom and watch what happens to you. Hallelujah. Write your prayer request very quickly and we are going to sing this song as they present it here before the Lord. And I assure you that by the God of heaven, you will watch the wonder that will happen. Those outside, those inside, you can submit your prayer request. If your, if your request has not been collected, just wave it, let the usher see it very quickly. Now you pass it to the last, the aisle by the left or right. No one will read it, don't worry. Just pass it so that quickly, if you are yet to write a few things, please release your faith. Let me give you a minute. And those who are following from across the nations, write your requests very quickly. This is the time when God will be visiting people mightily. You came here. Make sure that your faith is enlarged. Hallelujah. Have you learned the song now? Or do we need to do any rehearsal again?
until the nations see Jesus lifted up. Turn it to a prayer now. Everyone, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. Say, breathe, Lord, breathe, Lord, breathe, Lord, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. Let it be your prayer tonight. Say, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe. This song came to me by the Spirit. That was why I recorded it as you heard. I prayed it and prayed it and prayed it in my life. Most people have no idea what happens to a man when God breathes upon you. It's like a hen. You know how a hen sits on her eggs? And those eggs hatch and become young chicks that will also become big hens. So when you say breathe, you are saying, Lord, let your breath. His breath is powerful. It parted the Red Sea. It was the breath of God that came upon the bones in the valley of Ezekiel and turned those bones to become an exceeding great army. So as we pray over these requests, you are saying breathe. We are asking him. It's not the kneeling down of Joshua Selman that makes these prayers to be answered. God gave this song as a prophetic song to the body of Christ. This is not just to koinonia. That's going to be our prayer. Please submit your requests very quickly. We're going to sing this song one twice, once twice, and then I speak over this request. And then I will turn the song to a prophecy and rain it upon your spirit according to Isaiah 32 verse 15 that until the spirit is poured upon us from on high and then the wilderness is counted for a fruitful vine and the fruitful vine is counted for a forest receive manifest his power his wisdom receive manifest his power, his wisdom, receive, manifest, his power, his wisdom, let me prophesy, receive, manifest, his power, his wisdom, till the nations. In Genesis 8 verse 1 and 2 the Bible tells us that when it was time to put an end to the flood the Bible says verse 2 that God caused a strong wind verse 1 now I believe that God caused a strong wind to pass over the earth so the breath of God can blow away unfavorable things it's not only life 
when you are saying breathe upon me you are saying lord breathe upon everything let shame go as you breathe let reproach go as you breathe let everything that is not of God, a cupboard, the name that have been named, people have mocked your God. You are saying, Lord, breathe upon me. And for some of you who are saying there is no life in me, I don't even have hope to move forward. You are saying, breathe life into me. You are still going to sing this song. Now you sing it with revelation as I prepare to pray. The breath of God, Ruach, Numa, the wind of the spirit. I prophesied as I was commanded he said and there was a sound a sound and he said son of man prophesy to the four winds and say all wind breathe upon this lane and the wind came upon the bones and there arose an exceeding great army sing the song one last time with understanding in your heart breathe Lord
breathe upon this request in the name of Jesus breathe upon this request in the name of Jesus breathe upon this request in the name of Jesus that everything that has been written here by the power that raised Christ from the dead let it be turned into a testimony turned into a testimony turned into a testimony turned into a testimony for some of you it arrives Monday for some Tuesday for some tonight in the name of Jesus Christ speed to answers by the Spirit of the Living God speed to answers by the Spirit of the Living God speed to answers by the Spirit of the Living God and hear me every human agent who needs to partner with the Spirit of God to make for answers to this request in the name that is above all names wherever they are by the power of the prophetic we call them to your life now I call them to your life now therefore I stand upon this request and I declare these Egyptians that you see today may you see them no more forever may you see them no more forever in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus now I feel led to do this we're wrapping up in one minute I felt stirred in my heart the one thing you want God to do for you I know you wrote a lot of things here but I'm releasing my faith with you the one thing there may be many things but there might be one thing you are crying and saying Lord visit me you are the only one who knows whether you are outside in the next two minutes please I want you to pray I'm releasing my faith with you and you will watch the God of wonder surprise you you go shake away unbelief and go ahead and pray impossible situations don't ask for something that can cheaply be answered ask for something that you know the answer of will be pivotal to the advancement of your destiny go ahead and pray I release my faith as one sent I release my faith by the spirit of grace go ahead and pray remember that everything about our lives are connected to his will this is why we pray with confidence for the Bible says this is the confidence that we have that when we ask anything according to his will we know that he hears us please go ahead and pray receive manifest receive manifest receive manifest receive keep praying manifest receive manifest receive manifest his power his wisdom his power his wisdom Till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. Till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. Lord, we receive answers outside, inside, across the nations of the earth. We receive answers tonight by the Spirit of the Living God. Answers of wisdom, answers of favor, answers of restoration, answers of speed, answers of establishment, answers of fruitfulness, answers of breakthroughs, answers of higher realms, answers of superior dimensions, answers of open doors, answers of open gates, answers of open heavens in the name of Jesus Christ. Koinonia, hear me.
in the name of Jesus for the remaining months of this year September ending October November December may my God who is also your God do a speedy walk in your life do a speedy walk in your life a speedy walk in your career a speedy walk in this nation a speedy walk in your family in the name of Jesus Christ I pray over these hands that are lifted in the name of Jesus you have lifted it up it will not go down you have lifted it up you will not go down everything that looks like shame and reproach in the name of Jesus Christ I tear it like a curtain from your life hallelujah hallelujah listen to me we are what we are like Paul said because of the abundance of the grace that he has placed upon our lives and everything that he has placed is transferable to those who desperately and genuinely need it I pray for you all the time and I release many graces but let me just do one I will still keep crying this grace for visibility because it matters that the nations know you are there if you do not have the grace for visibility you can be gifted you will still remain in shame remain in reproach let me tell you when the grace for visibility locates you it does not matter where you are men will find you systems will find you governments will find you and exalt you I am a beneficiary of this grace I know what it can do therefore I pray for you my dear people from the depth of my spirit in the name of Jesus may this mantle for visibility that stops you from being closed that stops you from being mediocre and dejected once again and for some in higher proportions let it land upon your destiny now let it rest upon your destiny now upon your ministry now upon your career now upon your children upon your spouse in the name of Jesus finally every point of contact you came with I see people lifting materials lifting passports for others lifting photos of loved ones I see people lifting medical bills or medical reports I see people lifting all kinds of things provided your faith has agreed that that material is a point of contact I stand and I call upon the God who has sent us who has anointed us and distinguished us by his grace in the name of Jesus let every point of contact you have lifted whatever needs to happen to that point of contact to make you laugh I decree and declare may it happen this week may it happen not next week may it happen this week this week, this week, this week, this week, this week, this week, in the name of Jesus Christ. Where they rejected you, let this grace rest upon you, go back again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me, Koinonia. Any man who fights you beginning from today, on account of what you carry goes down immediately these are not empty words let me repeat it again that on account of what you carry that any man who fights you because of where God has placed you I'm calling upon the God of vengeance that in the name of Jesus Christ they go down immediately suffered no man to do them wrong he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm anybody who will not give you peace who has made up his mind that under their watch you must cry I call upon the God of Jeshurun the one who rides upon the wings of the wind may he arise for you as a God of vengeance may he arise for you as a God of vengeance in the name of Jesus Christ my Bible says now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always and by all means in the name of Jesus Christ 
I taught you that honor is the ability to not only be recognized but to be rewarded to match your true worth. I want to speak that because some of you is not like you are not being rewarded but you are not being rewarded to match your sacrifice intellectually, spiritually and otherwise. In the name of Jesus, may my God by this mantle compensate you for every year of disfavor. When Laban cheated Jacob and turned his wages once and again, there was a compensation system for Jacob. It was Jacob that gave birth to Joseph and one Joseph wiped his tears and brought him consolation forever. Became a prime minister in Egypt and reigned, preserved God's people till he died. I'm praying for you where you have been trodden upon cheated manipulated whether career wise or otherwise i'm saying it again may the god of justice in this season not only vindicate you but compensate you in the name of jesus christ wave your hands to jesus and give him all the praise wave it as an offering as you are waving it, you are saying goodbye to every demonic thing, every satanic thing that does not name the name of Christ. You are waving it prophetically. Goodbye to shame, goodbye to reproach, goodbye to yesterday in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now please allow me to make the altar call. My apologies for stretching you beyond today. You can see that it was a prophetic service. You are in this place. For your sake, we're going to steal out a minute or two in this service to ensure that you make it right with Jesus. Jesus is the wisdom of God. Jesus is our redemption. You are in this place and you are saying, Apostle, if you will give me a chance in this prophetic atmosphere, I want to make it right once and for all with Jesus. Or you are saying, I want to rededicate my heart, my life to Jesus. I don't want you to wait until anybody comes. You be the first with boldness and with seriousness. Come and stand here. Let's celebrate them. They are coming. Young and old, male or female, are you coming? Give them a big, big hand clap as they come. Let's encourage them. He wants to breathe upon your life. Don't sit back when the Holy Spirit is telling you you should be here. Come. 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 He wants to build you tonight. Just a minute. We are staying back for your sake. Receive. Manifest. His power. His wisdom. Till the nations. See Jesus. Lifted up. Exalted. Till the nations come see Jesus lifted up, exalted. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Please, if you're joining them, make it very fast because I'm about to lead them to pray. You're coming, please double up. We just have a minute for you. And please, for those who are coming from outside this place, allow them to double up their steps so that we can wrap up. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, brothers and sisters, for coming out to make this noble decision. You have seen the hand of God. You've seen what he is able to do. May I request that you lift your right hand high above your head and say this after me as loud and as clear as you can. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I have seen your power. I declare that I cannot help myself, but I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive you into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life from tonight i am a child of god forever and ever amen keep your beautiful hands lifted as i pray for you dear lord we thank you for these precious people 
you have brought them by your spirit and the many more who are connecting making these declarations of faith across the airwaves in the name of Jesus I declare that upon the authority of your word let their sins be forgiven forever and that in the name of Jesus from today they become bona fide recipients of your life in the name of Jesus I declare that you go forward ever and backward never you will enjoy the ministry of the Holy Spirit and you will grow in grace for in Jesus mighty and matchless name I pray amen now please just a moment I want you to just move to the the counselors by my right that will be your left they will have a word with you just for a few minutes just to encourage and pray with you and then soon after you'll be back to your seat let's honor them as they go koinonia give them a big 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 hand clap hallelujah just a few seconds south africa are you ready by the grace of god i'm in south africa this week from wednesday down to the weekend and then i rush back for service so by the grace of God all of you across southern Africa really South Africa and the neighboring countries you're welcome meet us at house of treasures it will be a time of revelation impartation and I believe that God is doing something amazing across the African continent and this includes South Africa so let's meet together and fellowship in the spirit as we build capacity and strengthen ourselves pastors are invited everyone government officials diplomats all and sundry you're welcome meet us at house of treasures and um, it will be an awesome time in the spirit and for all of us who are here as always you can connect through our social media platforms you can follow the conference and then of course you know I told you that every time I travel it is all of us traveling in the spirit hallelujah thank you very much for your love thank you for your kindness just to remind you again that 6th of october will be the um graduation for our school of ministry students in zaria and then on the 8th would be here in abuja and so all family and friends please do well uh, be prepared to come share and celebrate your loved ones who will be graduating is worth um, your sacrifice and your time and I want to thank all our international guests and all who have made it here from very far distances may the Lord bless you and I assure you by the Spirit that you will only return with testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ let's rise as we share the grace together in fellowship the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forever amen surely God's goodness and mercies follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. God bless you. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.